So the overall picture is that the activity at Fissure 8 has not fundamentally changed. Uh, a high rate of lava is still being erupted and we really haven't noticed a change in that rate. At the summit, the volcano continues to subside very slowly over time and periodically, now about once every 30 hours or every day, almost every day, the ground drops as much as two and a half meters or so at each drop and results in a ground shaking that's equivalent to about a magnitude five event. So back to Fisher 8. Um, as I said, there's still a high rate of effusion occurring from that fissure. The lava is pouring into the open channel uh, that makes its way to the northeast and makes a sharp right-hand turn on the east side of Kapoho Crater. About a week ago, or a little over a week ago, the open channel that was pouring into the ocean uh, began to recede such that the distal portion of that lava flow was being covered over uh, with a, -a cooled a cooled surface. And instead, the lava was moving through the core of that flow and entering the ocean over a very broad area. Yesterday, there was a uh, blockage in the channel just um, upslope or toward Fisher 8 from Kapoho Crater. Uh, not clear exactly how that happened. Uh, sections of the channel walls uh, periodically will break off and those get rafted down uh, down the lava channel and where the channel constricts those big blocks can end up blocking the channel uh, and causing the flow to back up, raise up and spill over uh, over the top. That's apparently what happened yesterday. There was a bit of a flow that went to the um, north of the uh, quarry, the Bryson's Cone area. Uh, but that flow seems to have uh, slowed significantly and perhaps stopped at this time. There's also another flow starting yesterday that started to go to the, um, to the west side of Kapoho Crater. And that flow was still active this morning. And so if it continues flowing toward the ocean, it's going to probably hug the uh, south edge of the flow and enter the ocean. In the past uh, few days, uh, the lava flow on the south side where it enters the ocean uh, moved a little bit closer to the warm ponds and to the charter school that's located there. Uh, and yesterday was within about 500 to 700 meters or so. So 2,000, about two, uh, 500 to 700 meters, so 1,800 to 2,200 feet or so, almost a half a mile. Uh, Fisher 22 is just uh, spattering uh, occasionally, intermittently. The lava flow that was uh, forming uh, from the Fisher 22 uh, slowed and stopped in the past few days, and it didn't reach very far, just a few hundred meters. Our instruments in the Lower East Rift Zone are not detecting any widening of the rift or any pressurization occurring along the Lower East Rift Zone. And there are very few earthquakes occurring uh, in this part of the volcano. What that's telling us is that there is no uh, increased accumulation of magma below ground. And instead, like it has been for the last uh, six, seven, eight weeks, lava has an open pathway from the upper part of the rift zone into the lower east rift zone and out to fissure eight and onto the surface. At the summit, uh, as I mentioned, there are still uh, lots of earthquakes occurring. And these earthquakes tend to occur in uh, these uh, 30 hour, 24 to 30 hour windows uh, that culminate in the sudden dropping of the ground. And some of our instruments are showing that it's drops as much as two and a half meters at a time. So that's way above me. Hali Mau Mau Crater continues to enlarge as that crater floor of the Kilauea crater floor drops and slides into Hali Mau Mau. I'd like to direct your attention to our homepage if you want to learn more about the activity at the summit. Do a search on HVO and in the news section of the website, 
the lower left hand corner below the map uh, we have a link to a publication it's a report it's about 12 pages long that describes the summit activity and some of the uh, some of the scenarios that we think are more likely than others so I invite you to take a look at that and I'll close with one final observation that we've uh, observed uh, in the past week or two and that is when the summit drops, that sudden jolt, the culmination of uh, 12 to 20 hours of earthquake activity, it seems to, um, when the floor drops like that, it seems to hit the top of the magma reservoir. And it sends a pressure wave from the summit area that we can detect on our instruments all the way down here in the East Rift Zone. And then about an hour and a half to two hours after that sudden drop and that pressure wave, we've observed an increase in the effusion rate at fissure eight, as if there's more magma being pushed out for a short period of time as a consequence of that subsidence, that sudden jolting, down dropping at the summit. I wanna emphasize that that increase is uh, short-lived, it's temporary, and so far has only led to a few occasional breakouts, or excuse me, overtopping of the levees uh, along the upper part of the channel. So it has not led to significant overflows, uh, but it's a, something that we're sort of uh, sensitized to, and each time there's a sudden event up at the summit, we direct our field crews to take a look and uh, try to track uh, any overflows that may occur from along the channel. Thank you, and I'd be happy to take your questions at the very end.